Okay. So another example of a web server one examples of this is what I call a blocking single threaded web server. And I, I decided to explain that because it's the easiest to explain. Okay. Obviously, none of the web servers work like that. And well, I take that back. So some web servers work like that and there's benefits of that, but most web servers have different implementations. So let's let's talk about that. what exactly happened when I make that get request, okay? So this is my web server. I just made it into a box so we can draw stuff in it, okay? And then when you first, a client makes a request, whether this get request, there is something happening before that. Okay, the HTTP protocol runs on a transport layer called the TCP, Transmission Control Protocol. Okay, so a transmission control protocol, what it does is it establishes a two-way communication between a server or a client, okay? But the HTTP protocol is just a request response. So if you make a request, the first thing it does is establish this TCP connection. So this is like some handshaking going on. If there's a TLS, you need to establish the TLS if there's a secure thing. And then once you do that, the server creates in its memory, and very important here, memory. Let's focus on the word memory. Every client that connect reserves a little bit of a memory on the server, okay? And that's where things can get a little tricky, right? That's where all the attacks, denial of attack, happens because of this reservation of memory, okay? Reserve a lot of memory and your server crashes, okay? But, okay, your client connects, you reserve a little bit of a memory, and this thing is called TCP socket. You reserve a socket for that client, okay? Okay, and once you reserve a socket for that client, now you see, okay, we have one thread, one process with one thread that is allowed to execute stuff, okay? You can have 10 of those sockets, but they are sitting in memory. They are just idle, okay? But your process can only execute one at a time, okay? So let's, oh, I'm free, your thread is free. Let's say there's a thread here that I start executing and says, okay, oh, you want me to get index HTML? Okay, let me go do an IO desk or whatever, right? And then start getting busy. That thread means it's, it's the sock is busy. It's doing something. That process is busy doing that. And that means that thread cannot do anything else while it's doing that, okay? So based on that request, and that's a very simple request, but there are many requests that actually pulls from the database or, or does a processing, I don't know, prime number, right? Do, do your web API thingy, okay? And that's the tricky part where you need to do short circuit uh, uh, breaking, say a circuit, circuit break and just break the circuit if, if, it, if the client executes for a long time. You execute that, you release, the third is back and it's, Back in normal, the, the client got a response and we're good to go. So what happened now? Okay, so let's say I want the client works on another request. It can use its the existing TCP connection. It doesn't have to create a brand new TCP connection, which is kind of fast. So having a connection, TCP connection open with the server is a kind of nice thing. There's a bad thing about it is just you have your reserving memory on the server. So if you have a TCP connection that is open and you're not using it, you're wasting server memory, okay? But yeah, pros and cons of this. And we talked about the HTTP. And then we go execute and then release, all right? Let's, get, let's make this a little bit spicy. Let's add another client, okay? One client may, makes a post request. That's the right request to the server. Okay, so I want to write something like I want to create a new to-do list in my API and the web server takes that and start processing. Then guess what? A, a poor Joe Slop here want to connect to the web server. Okay, and the server is a little bit busy. And now the web server implementations shine. What do you do? What do you do as a web server implementer? Apache does one thing, Tomcat does the same thing, all right? Node.js does another thing, Python does another thing. You can do whatever you want if you write your own as well, okay? You can do whatever you want. And But here's what, here's what a blocking single threaded does, okay? It creates that TCP socket for you, and that's it. It just, just that, that. It creates a uh, place of memory for you. But guess what? Sorry, I can't serve you. 
yeah, the only thing I could do is just create that socket for you. Yeah, you have a TCP connection. Booyah. That's it. But I'm busy serving this guy now. Okay. That one thread is busy serving that. Okay. And then once you basically done, right, this guy can be served and then you release and you're done. Okay. Some, you, some of you might say now, okay, can you just spin up another thread? Sure. That's what Apache does. It spin up a new thread for every single request. Okay. And that's why you will, you will see when you go to Apache or Tomcat, there is a parameter called maximum thread numbers or maximum connections, right? How many, how many of those do you want? Right? I cannot just have unlimited, right? Well, you can change it to unlimited if you want, if you have unlimited memory here. But think about that when you really work with web servers. I like you to think about all of that stuff. It is really interesting to know how stuff works, especially web servers, because we work with these as with software engineers. I mean, writing REST APIs, this is very critical to understand, guys, okay? So your implementation of how it looks like is very critical. So you might be happy with a single threaded blocking, okay? But you might say, okay, I'm going to spin multiple web servers like that. Okay. So I'm going to put them behind a load balancer. And that's fine. Why not? Right. I don't see anything wrong with that. Must be some limitations, right? You can put in Docker containers. You can spin up as many containers as you want off single threaded. I find this way more simple than having complex thread, multi-threaded app web server, right? Uh, let's have a discussion in the comment section, guys. What do you think is, is a better way of doing things, okay? There is no right answers or wrong answers here, okay? People still debating this, okay? Don't think this is set on stones, right? Don't just absorb information, discuss, right? Challenge everything that you read, okay?